Forum located in Inglewood, California, the home of the Lasers, the home of the Kings, the home of the great championship basketball team, the Los Angeles Lakers. And his opponent across the ring, on my left, fighting out of the red corner, really needing no introduction the world over. He enters the ring wearing gold trunks with turquoise trim and hailing from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. His weight this evening, 173 pounds. His outstanding record, 47 victories, only three defeats, one draw with 38 big wins by way of knockout. Fans tonight, he dedicates not only his efforts, but a portion of his purse to our troops in the Middle East. Welcome the five-time world champion, the WBO super middleweight champion of the world, Thomas Hickman Hearn. Al Bernstein for the Boxing Channel here with Jimmy Lennon Jr., who has been uh, selected for induction into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. A well-deserved honor, and Jimmy, we wanted a chance to sit and chat with you a little bit about that. Um, obviously, it's very gratifying, I'm sure, for you to get elected. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, you know, it's nothing that I aimed for. It just I'm having such a great time announcing fights, being part of this business, and it's uh, what a compliment to... Uh, to be a person who's, you know, not not one of the fighters, not really part of the, of the sport going on, but uh, along the side being recognized for contributing, and I couldn't be more proud or more honored to to be inducted, to, and for that ceremony upcoming in June. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to be there to help them usher in uh, you to the uh, Boxing Hall of Fame, and uh, you know, the interesting thing to me about all this is that. You are someone who uh, is part of kind of one of the first families of boxing, if you will, because your dad, uh, Jimmy Lennon Sr., was a, a renowned ring announcer, uh, perhaps the best of all time. And so you learned at his feet this whole craft. Yeah, I sure did, and I didn't intend to. You know, I, I was just going through my life and uh, going to school and going to college, and I was found myself without uh, a job, really. And uh, <laughs> this pesky job that you need, yeah. The, that's the old uh, situation that happened with me. And so he invited me to participate. And you know, I I, I looked like him. I sound like him. I had his name. Yes. And it was kind of I, I I think it was a kind of a calling there. But I didn't really intend it. But it sure worked out very nicely. And you know, I didn't really. Uh, study him and train after him, but he was the only announcer I really watched, and so it was it was a very natural fit for me. I'm very fortunate. And of course, it, as you're elected to the Hall of Fame, and this is, I, I think, one of the intriguing, uh, maybe uh, I'm going to say melancholy parts of this. To be honest, your dad should have been in, put into the Boxing Hall of Fame at this point already, but I think. Maybe you getting in at this juncture is kind of a, you're carrying him along with you. Yeah, there, well, in a way, yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have been here without him. And, um, you know, there are a lot of people that deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, but first and foremost to me is my father. And, yeah, there's a little uh, odd feeling because yeah. uh, he really deserves it much more than I. Uh, he was just a classic showman. Mm -hmm. And he really, you know, before him, especially in the West Coast, in the start of television, they're, they're televising all these fights in L.A., and he was weekly on television and just doing a great job and, and really, you know, spearheading a lot of uh, what we see today in announcers. So he was, um, you know, a, a great man and a great announcer, as you said. And so he deserves to be there. And maybe there's something I can do to, to help nudge it, it to go in that direction in the future. Yeah, that is something that, that should happen. Now, you, uh, as so many people in boxing, especially when they're under, uh, doing things like what you're doing, you are an educator. You have had another job for a long time until fairly recently. Uh, and out in California, you worked as an educator. Uh, how Did you ever get a reaction from the kids and from people at your school after they'd see you on television announcing a fight and there you were, uh, you know, in the school? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, I was uh, in the education business for 25 years as a teacher and then a headmaster. And that was really my passion. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I would work during the day and, and on the weekends travel off to Las Vegas and do the fight, big fights and come back. And, you know, it was, it, it really brought me down to size because I find myself 
myself on Saturday night, and, and I remember this exactly. I'm announcing a Tyson fight on Saturday night. I come back on Monday, and I'm wiping down tables <laughs> in the cafeteria after at lunchtime. So, uh, yeah, and some of the kids, uh, you know, enjoyed uh, talking to me about it afterwards. And uh, so that, that was kind of a, a fun combination. Now, people don't always realize uh, when they see someone... Uh, doing this, and especially when they see somebody doing it right, though, as you do it, <clears throat> ring announcing, it, there are many uh, different nuances to it. It's not this easy job that you just get up and do. First of all, you're fed a lot of information from people, and sometimes you get that information even at the last minute. Yeah, you, you certainly do, and and you got to be on, it's got to be smooth, and, and a lot of this information is are difficult names to announce, yes. or, or switches, and you know, it, it can be quite a challenge, and of course I want to do it right. But it was Don King who, for me, was the the most common. At the last minute, he'd I'd be in, in the middle of announcing. I'd see him over. He'd come from over my shoulder and he'd say something in my ear to to have me include or to introduce. And you know, it was uh, it was a real challenge. He, so he was famous for doing that with me. And sometimes you actually had to kind of do more than just announce things because you'd see mistakes in scorecards or you'd see situations where you kind of had to be you had to be the teacher just like you were in school. Yeah, I think my experience really helped out in a number of situations. Sometimes, you know, my job also is not only to build the crowd up, whether it's for an announcement, introduction, or a decision, but to also calm them down. You know, there are some very volatile crowds where the decision is very controversial, and so you have to maybe say something like, you know, we've seen a great fight, no matter who the winner is, they deserve a round of applause. And so you, 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 you deal with it in that way. Uh, I've been to commissions where or um, boxing venues where they really didn't have a professional commission and they give me one time I, I won't mention the state but I got a score of the final score was um, I think it was uh, 435 to 392 and I think what they added all the scores up as one and told them and so I had to correct that and so but certainly because I know boxing I I, uh, I have been there to also correct some decisions make sure it's done properly <laughs> now you uh, you started your career at the fabulous forum where you learned at the feet of your dad and you used to start out the bouts and then he would come on later and you said the fans were, were really very interactive with you there yeah you know what it, it, we'd see them every other week and we get close and uh, you know first of all they're very supportive of me and I think it was because you know they love my dad and they they saw me and they were they were really supportive so I appreciate that but I do remember some times where you know I'm announcing and and I'm in the ring and, and so it was hey you had to get a haircut Jimmy and uh, Junior get uh, you know get that uh, taken care of so uh, it was a, a good good crowd and a good learning experience too and you've been the voice of Showtime Boxing essentially from its origins and in fact of course that's your your phrase it's Showtime uh, number one did you think of doing that phrase or did someone at Showtime suggest it, to you. it was kind of a team effort. It, it was actually 20 years ago in December, and it was a Julio Cesar Chavez fight against Marty Jakubowski, and it was at the Mirage. And I remember this distinctly. And and there's an executive at the Mirage who talked to me and Jay Larkin, who was the head of Showtime Sports at that time. And he said, "Hey, why don't you use it Showtime?" And, and we kind of built on, "Oh yeah, how can we build that up?" and so forth. So it was a real team effort. And 20 years ago, just passed, and uh, it, it's been something very special for me. I'm proud to be. Uh, associated with Showtime so much. Well, it's great to be one of your colleagues at Showtime, and one of the interesting things to me, and this I think is something that we share in common, a philosophy, your philosophy is very much about the fact that the focus is on those fighters and what they do in the ring. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, my job is to put the spotlight on the fighters. They're risking their lives. It's really all about them. Without them, we would have nothing. And sometimes I see young announcers who, who come in and they, they want to make a catchphrase or they want to make it about them. And, uh, you know, certainly you can be exciting and build it up, but never do I forget, as I know you don't either, that it's all about the fighters and them. And if we can add to it, we're just the richer for it. Now, in June, you will be there for the uh, induction ceremony. I was fortunate enough to go through that as I was inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame, and it's, a, it's just a grand experience. As you look forward to it, uh, uh, what kind of emotions do you have going into this? Well, first of all, Al, I want to say I'm glad I have you as my mentor to, <laughs> to advise me on how to deal with this. But uh, I, I tell you, I, um, I don't think it's quite settled in on yeah. me because I, I've heard when people have mentioned that, you know, 
you're going to put your hand in fist, in, in the fist in cement, and you're going to get a ring, and your yeah. plaque's going to be up there. And I think, gee, you know, long after I'm gone, yeah. there will be some sort of legacy, and it's even hard to imagine. So I'm very, very thrilled to that. Uh, of course, my thoughts are, are gratitude for my father. I, I've been a very fortunate man. I've been at the right place at the right time a, a number of times, and. Um, and so I'm just very excited about this, and I'll, I'll continue to call you and ask you for advice and, <laughs> on, uh, and some tips uh, as the ceremony approaches. I'm happy to provide them, and uh, let me say that uh, uh, there is no one in, in the world that deserves it more than you. And I, I think many people believe that this kind of honor for you is recognition of the fact that you have earned your nickname as the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ah, you're very kind. I thank you very much and uh, I'm excited to uh, to see what's in store this June and then all the years after with the great fights coming up. Absolutely, because Jimmy will be around for a long time uh, telling us that it's showtime. Uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr. who will be uh, inducted into uh, the International Boxing Hall of Fame in June and we're looking forward to it and we honor him for that.